Hello, I'm Jane King. ResverLogix is a late stage clinical biotechnology company dedicated to improving the lives of patients who are suffering from chronic illnesses. And with me to explain some of the therapies that the company is working on right now is CEO Donald McCaffrey. So Donald, great to see you again. We have to do it this way. NASDAQ's not available right now. Everything's closed <laughs> in New York, but uh, we make do with what we have. So well, if, if it's good enough for Jimmy Kimmel, it's good enough for us. That's yeah. right. Yeah, we're making the best of it. So, um, you know, well, last time we talked, you were talking about how you're working with epigenetics. And and I remember asking you, explain to me what that is exactly. So if you could get, give us a background of epigenetics, what that is and how that applies to your business. Sure. Yes, we are the world leader in epigenetics. We're about eight to 10 years ahead of any other company. Now, epi in Latin means above. So, and then of course we know what genetics means. So what we're doing is turning on or off various DNA. And by doing that, you can target, um, disease causing DNAs and turn them off. So it's a very unique approach to therapeutics. You know, I feel like with the coronavirus and the vaccines and the treatments and everything that the public has a greater appreciation of just how difficult it is to find treatments for certain things. I mean, do you feel like there has been a greater understanding of what companies like yours does because we're all publicly watching this play out in real life? Well, it's interesting you bring up uh, COVID-19 because um, up until a week ago, we had no idea that we had an impact on it. And once that broke out and started to get quite serious in February, a group of 22 international academic universities, big names like Cambridge, uh, UCSF, um, Mount Sinai, some, some extremely large names in the field, they got together and started uh, dissecting uh, COVID-19 to figure out what it was made of. And they came down with 30 different proteins that are involved in, in that particular virus. So what they did next is what they took the uh, list of various uh, pharmaceutical drugs, et cetera, there's 20,000 that they compared to these 30 protein targets to see which drugs actually could interact with COVID-19 and hopefully some of them will involve uh, stopping it. Uh, they produced a list of only 63 that came out and uh, we were actually on the list. So mm -hmm. our drug Apivet alone, or also known as RVX 208, was uh, on the list, it was second. I don't think it was ranked by, <laughs> by effort, but it was very, very surprising for us to see that. So we've been very active in the last 10 days um, working on new partnerships to utilize this drug. So apparently COVID-19 also attaches to Bromo Domain 4. And in one respect, we can knock it off of Bromo Domain 4, but in another area, it's using another target called ACE2 to actually enter the human cell. And there it takes over the machinery inside the cell and starts to replicate. So our drug won't kill the virus, but our drug has a very good shot at stopping it from being able to reproduce. Wow, that is and really interesting. Yes. Um, if it wasn't for this cooperative science going on globally, we would never know that. Maybe a couple of decades from now, we might figure that out. But uh, mm -hmm. this is brand new news for us, and we're very excited about the potential there. Well, and I think that you all are influencing a whole generation of young people to study science and just to really see how impactful those that work can be in the world so congratulations on that thank you yes <laughs> it is kind of exciting and there'll be a lot more attention paid to science now because uh you know it used to be a good place to to do budget cuts at, in medical costs etc i don't think there'll be a lot of that going on for quite no, some time sure not so i mean what is your take on the on the various treatments that are out there and just finding something and I mean, is this the kind of thing that you think we might have to be dealing with every five to 10 years or so, some kind of new virus popping up? Well, it may, it may happen more often. Uh, I'm, as you know, I'm up in Canada and the SARS event actually did hit Canada. It was the second country to get it 10 years ago. So for us, this is kind of like round two. But um, yeah, I do think it's gonna happen more and more often. But with these scientists being able to determine issues like how uh, the virus is getting into the human cell and 
to ACE2 and that it also attaches to bromo domain 2. I'm not sure if they know exactly what it's doing there yet, but with this kind of collective knowledge being put forward and so fast, I think we have a really good shot at coming up with some uh, very solid uh, medications mm -hmm. while they have time to develop the vaccines that okay. also we know will work. That's right. Okay. So just in general, uh, where do you plan to see resverologic? So I think 2020 has been kind of a year that nobody expected. So where do you plan to take the company the rest of this year and then maybe next year as well? Well, it's been a fantastic year for us, believe it or not. It, it won't show in the stock until this whole uh, economic crisis is over. But in January, um, we were granted FDA uh, breakthrough therapy designation. Uh, that is the highest designation you can get. It fast tracks the program. It allows us to work cooperatively in designing the final programs with the FDA. There's some tax implications and other things. There's only ever been 130 drugs ever awarded that designation, hmm. and none of them have been in major programs in uh, cardiovascular. So for us, it is definitely a huge breakthrough, and it allows us to validate our technology with uh, pharmaceutical partners that we're working with. So we are in some uh, co-development discussions for our, our final round and market launch with uh, apobetalone, mm -hmm. and uh, we will be co-developing from this stage forward with a major pharmaceutical company. So okay. it's, an, it's been a very exciting year, and then of course, the whole COVID thing, I just about fell over when I read that list. <laughs> so yeah, well, we were uh, impressed. yeah, no, for sure. And um, best of luck to you because they, um, I mean, we show just how devastating uh, some of these diseases can be economically and health wise. And I mean, this is having psychological impacts on a whole generation that lived through this. So, um, yeah, so and, and there's like you. Uh, queried earlier, there are going to be other waves, and some of them will actually be the uh, back, or the uh, resistant bacteria, etc. So um, we got to pay more attention and be ready for. <laughs> okay, uh, and attention. isolate quickly. It sounds like is is the key to containing these. So. Well, I've been long, locked up about four weeks now, so <laughs> it's starting to get old, but <laughs> well, I'm it going is on important too. So, but I, I think uh, it'll be a while. So, um, thank you so much, Don, for coming and updating us, and hopefully next time we'll be back to normal. We can be back at the Nasdaq like we used All to. All right, that sounds good. <laughs> Great to see thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good day. You too.